What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, in the software world like Corey, Zapier, A. Weber, and many more. Uh, we talk about not just the successes, but how to overcome and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Um, and this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Um, at Rise25, our mission is to connect you with your best referral partners and customers. Um, we do it in three ways, a done-for-you media, a done-for-you lead generation, and done-for-you VIP events. Um, for the media pieces, it's podcasts like this. We actually help companies completely run and launch their own podcast. Uh, we distribute it across 11 different channels, including a dedicated blog post. And so the person or co-founder or founder can show up and talk, and we do everything else. Um, we've been doing podcasts, working with podcasters since 2009. Um, I personally credit podcasting as the single best thing I've done for my business and my life. It's allowed me to connect with people like Corey, the founders of you know, P90X, Einstein Bagels, Mattel, RX Bars, and many more. And besides making great friends um, and finding my business partner, it's led to a lot of relationship and countless customers and referral partners. So, I mean, my idea for Corey actually is he should – start something uh, where, let's say, for Shedwell, he would uh, reach out to founders or of restaurant chains or whatever the, the position of restaurant chains, and he's delivering high-quality value content, which you know you'll, you should follow Corey on LinkedIn anyways because he's uh, is a huge following. He puts out great content, put out great content in the industry that you're serving, but you're also connecting and networking with some of the top people of that industry. So it's just some ways whoever is listening to this can use it for their own uh, company. Um, And so, you know, I'm going to talk about, there's another quick thing that um, this episode is also brought to you by Sticker Mule. And I've never talked about this before, this episode actually, but Sticker Mule has an amazing, they've given me an amazing deal that I'm giving to viewers. Corey, you may even enjoy this, but um, the, uh, I don't know if anyone has heard of Sticker Mule who's listening, but it's one of the easiest, fastest way to buy custom printed products. Um, They work with Amazon, Nike, Google, Netflix, um, and they basically help you upload your logo and you get these really high quality custom stickers. They have an amazing deal that's 10 custom stickers for $1. Um, And they told me if that goes viral, they will shut it down um, because they don't want to give out too many of them. So if you want 10 stickers for your company or whatever the case is for a dollar, it's typically 20, um, go to stickermule.com slash inspired. And, um, if you go there and the offer is not available, it will still default to like $10 off your first order or something like that. So use that. But on to the more important thing. Today, we have Corey Warfield. He's the co-founder of Shedwell. Um, they're an employee scheduling and workforce management software company. What that basically means is they help staff at companies fill a shift or staff take on an additional shift. So if someone's working at a restaurant and they, they don't have to call up all their buddies and see, can you cover for me? Can you cover for me? They can put it in the Shedwell schedule and someone can pick it up very easily and they work with companies and they've they've been able to work with companies like ibm american airlines bp four seasons and several other high profile companies but they also amazingly enough i don't know at the time you're listening to this have a free option which we will talk about uh his mentality around that where even if you're a small company and you need to you have this pain point you could still use their software. It's not just for huge companies. Um, Corey worked in the hospitality industry for years where he saw the need for a scheduling app like this. So it came from a personal pain point. Um, He's also a seminal team of engineers, developers, and business specialists to bootstrap Shedwell. So go to Shedwell.com. It's Shed, S-H-E-D-W-O-O-L.com. And uh, schedule schedule that that comes from you are linguist, so I know it uh, it goes with the territory, but it also makes me hard makes it hard for me to uh, say it 
back to back. <laughs> uh, he's also, if he wasn't busy enough, co-founder of MentorUGlobal.com, so you could check that out. It's actually a pro bono consulting platform. As you can tell already, Corey has a big heart because everything he wants to do, he wants people to use it, and he wants to give it away and, and get people access to it. Um, a fun fact about Corey is he is a freestyle rapper as well. So if you see him on the street of Chicago, um, ask him to uh, do a freestyle rap for you. Corey, thanks for joining me. It's an absolute pleasure, Dr. Jeremy. Fan of the show as well. Yeah, thank you. How did you attract someone like that, someone with that amount of experience? Uh, so he and I were both actually uh, brand ambassadors for Damon John for his recent book, uh, Rise and Grind, which was a great book. And, and he and I were both happy to promote it as entrepreneurs. And uh, that was kind of an on online plus experience. So we, we had a Facebook group. And then when he'd come to our cities, we, we'd meet up with him and help promote his book and that kind of thing. And I was promoting Shedwell pretty heavily in the space. And because he had experience in the space, uh, he actually sought me out and said, hey, you know, this is kind of my wheelhouse. I'm looking for my next big thing. Uh, and he, he'd been, he'd, he'd been, uh, you know, kind of in the entrepreneurial, like, you know, top first 10 higher on the last company or two he'd been in. So he was kind of familiar with mm. the earlier stage, uh, yeah. pain points and things like that. So he, he truly was just a godsend to be honest. Mm. You know, Corey, um, first of all, I want to just thank you for your time and your, your expertise in sharing your journey. Um, I always ask, um, at the end of the interview, two questions, um, which is, since it's Inspired Insider, what's been a low moment and what's been a proud high moment? Because with you know entrepreneurship, there's you know ups and downs. And um, I think I was reading for you even like you went from you know uh, car repossessed at some point <laughs> yeah. to buyout off recently. So yeah, exactly, it's crazy roller coaster. Um, we'll, we'll let you. We'll finish on the on the high note. But what's been a lower moment that you know we don't see the everyone doesn't see the behind the scenes challenges. We just see what people put out. Um, you know, people put their best foot forward in social media and everything like that. Yeah. So believe it or not, the the two that you mentioned aren't even the high or the low, at least in my okay. perspective. Okay. And the buyout, the buyout offer actually came before the car repossession, <laughs> <Okay>. um, <clears throat> which, which is this kind of kind of funny uh, as far as the process goes. But I'd say about a year, year and a half into the company, um, I didn't, I didn't necessarily feel this way completely. But the people kind of in my in my circle, in my business world, thought that I was really kind of thinking it too seriously as a company and kind of taking it too much to heart and we're noticing some changes. So they put me on a suicide watch with a uh, really? therapist for some time. And, you know, it's just, it is valuable to share that with people because it really is that emotional. And although I didn't necessarily think, you know, that I was feeling that way, the fact that my, my inner circle had perceived it as such and taking the steps that they did um, really is just kind of an eye opener. And I, and I do know I was taking it very seriously and I probably never stopped, but, uh, but I found the, the silver lining. But so that was probably, you know, both, both internally, you know, just to, just to know that I was being perceived in that light and kind of casting that doubt, um, was probably a low moment for me. Um, well, in addition to probably the hundred. Well, so, so this was actually, uh, an accelerator that I was in and, and I was on location with, with them for many months and they'd given me a, uh, an advisor that had been considering investing in the company. And basically just weeks before demo day, he said, Oh, you know, you might want to go get a day job. And uh, I just thought it was really uncouth. And, and I told him that as the only full-time employee, that, that if I was to not be a full-time employee and the company didn't have a full-time employee, that I thought that that was going to be death to death to the company and death to the baby. And I wasn't prepared, you know, to do that at all. And I took it pretty tough. And I guess my, my reaction to that, you know, and there were definitely tears and screaming and all that. But I think the, the reaction reason, that I gave. I can't picture you screaming. Huh? You seem like a pretty, like, Happy go lucky person, but yeah, until he, until he threatened to kill my baby, right? <laughs> but no, you're you're right. I don't I don't scream often. Um, but and then I, I would say so, kind of through, through that lens of that being an emotional low point, where it just felt like no one believed in the company other than my co-founder and I. And mm. you know, we we'd been rejected by dozens of investors already at that point, and, and we'd had a lot of people kind of say, "Oh yeah, we're we're probably interested. We might come in if you just find a, a lead investor." And you know, all of this is really you know, that negative, negative, or at least it seemed negative kind of culminating with that mentor saying that was a yeah. super low point emotionally. 
And then I would say on, on the other side, you know, recently we've had a couple of days where we've done over, over $1,000 in MRR in one day. And I think as a founder to see a company generating real revenue and watching my, my team grow and people making, making real money for themselves and for the company has been a super high point. So I think the, the first day that we did over $1,000 in a day and just actually seeing that number hit the bank account was probably my, my high point um, to date. It was just kind of like a proud parent. I, I felt like I was watching my, my kid get straight A's in fifth grade or something like that. Why did you decide to turn down the buyout offer? Um, well, so so candidly, it was it was a it was a good offer, a nice offer. It was a multi million dollar offer. Um, I counted with a hundred million dollars, and then we had a laugh. Um, and uh, but right. but really, I've always known the potential for this. We we have companies in our pipeline that would represent you know strong six and low seven figures a year. Um, so to think about selling it for for just just a couple million dollars, you know, what wasn't even something I, I would have entertained, and I've never uh, never looked back or regretted that. Now, mm-hmm. it did turn out that the company trying to buy us uh, was authorized to go twice that amount. I hadn't known that, and that takes it from a single million to to a double digit million, mm-hmm. and, and that it still still wouldn't have. I, I still have no regrets, but that was it was flattering to know that. And, um, you know, without getting too too into the weeds, the right. the person that authorized that that larger number to buy us out is now um, now probably joining the company to a, our our company to a capacity. So um, it's cool to see things go full circle. But mm. it was super easy to turn that offer down. It was it was flattering. It was, it was super affirming. It let me know that we were definitely onto something and that we're, we're we're making the right the right impression in our space. Um, you know, the the company. That, that tried to buy us is not, is not going to be an indirect competitor. Uh, and, and yeah, so w- without getting too, too far yeah, into it, that's kind totally. of... A, <laughs> but the yeah, color the reposition came after that offer? Yep. Yep. Oh. So you weren't thinking at all like, well, damn, I should have just taken that. <laughs> no, not at all. Not, no. not even for a second. I mean, that, that that's right in the same veins of, uh, of the guy telling me to take a day job. It's, this has never been, uh, it, it, first of all, it's never really even been about money, but it's never been about a small amount of money either, um, to be candid. Yeah, totally. Well, Corey, thank you. Thank you for sharing the journey and uh, your thought process along the way. Everyone should check out uh, shedwool.com. It's, it's uh, S-H-E-D-W-O-O-L.com and mentor you. That's Y-O-U global.com. Any other places Corey, we should point people towards online. Well, so the, the only thing I would say is that those are those are both great great resources, great places to go check out. If we can add value with with either of those uh, platforms, I, I'd love to love to get involved with all of your listeners. Uh, but also, I would say that just connecting with me on LinkedIn is probably a great thing to do. And I am right around the thirty thousand first connections, so. Uh, as this show airs, they might not be able to accept new connections from people. Yeah. In that case, what I suggest people do is follow me um, and then start engaging with my content because I can always find someone in my 30,000 that's not as engaging. And if I start to see someone's name and they start adding value to my feed and start start commenting with value, add comments to my posts, I'll find I'll find room to, uh, to make them a first connection. And yeah. from there, we can message each other. I'm always happy to help any way that I can. So Shedwell.com is great. MentorYouGlobal.com, great. Um, definitely check out those websites, but also uh, connect with me online. Uh, any, any listener of this show is a friend of mine, so I look forward Thank to making you. some new connections. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Really appreciate it. And um, I just wanted to be the first one to thank you so much. Uh, It's a pleasure, Jeremy. Truly, I I look forward to getting together for a cup of coffee or something someday as well. Definitely. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.